you've probably seen claims that your skincare is wrecking your hormones. There is a big disconnect between public perception around endocrine disruption and reality, and that gap seems to be widening. To understand endocrine disruption, you first need to know a little bit about the endocrine system. It's your body's hormone messaging network. Tiny molecules like estradiol bind to receptors, which they have a very specific affinity for, to trigger change, like the regulation of female reproductive cycles. For a chemical to disrupt the system, it has to outcompete your body's own hormones at these receptors at real world levels. This is really at the heart of the disconnect. Most studies used to spark fear don't reflect reality. They're done in isolation from the hormones in your body these chemicals would usually have to compete with, and at high concentrations that don't reflect reality. In beauty, a lot of people are concerned about parabens causing endocrine disruption, but actually, what's used in beauty is roughly 10,000 times less potent than estradiol. They're also used at about 0.3% tops in finished products. The dose and potency is far too low to cause endocrine disruption. Where things get messy is that the public fear isn't just about science, it's cultural. Since the 90s, chemical feminization panic has often reflected anxieties about gender, fertility, and control, which conveniently has translated to more research funding, which has driven a pretty disturbing science sensationalism trend in the arena of endocrine disruption. For my latest podcast episode, I was joined by endocrine disruption researcher Dr. Chris Borger to help cut through the noise. If you want to learn more about this topic from a place of science rather than fear, tune in to my latest episode.